Forgiveness is freedom. That's a big one. That I and I've whew, that one, oh man, that one this year, wow. This year was huge for that. For me. What's up, Lay Bays? Welcome back to my channel if you are returning. And of course, welcome if you are new here. So happy to have you either way. I'm Lay. I am a 30-something year old millennial. Just here navigating life and taking you all along the journey with me so definitely if you enjoy lifestyle content vlogs travel what else do i do fashion hauls everything in between if you enjoy any of that definitely be sure to click that subscribe button for more um but i'm just really excited about today's video uh to be completely honest with you all because your girl is roughly two weeks away from her from finishing up her I'm speaking in the you know whatever person uh from finishing up her first year in her 30s and when I tell y'all this has been such a transformative year for me I just I had to do a video of this caliber do some type of video in regards to this because there were so many things I learned this year I mean as far as things I learned about myself, about my relationships with others, about just navigating life. I really feel like when I hit my 30s, y'all, it's almost like there was like something over my eyes that just like opened up. And so this year has just been, it's it's been full of ups and downs, but it's been full of just amazing experiences and so much that I've been able to learn um, in this year. I will be honest, like, thinking back and just reflecting on like this time last year when I was thinking to myself oh my gosh I am two weeks away from turning 30 and to be honest I was very apprehensive about turning 30 y'all I just felt like I'm getting old I really felt like that I'm like I'm getting old getting older but I was like I really felt like 30 was old at 29 like I really felt like I was getting old and there was just things that I wanted to accomplish that I hadn't accomplished yet there were goals that I felt like I should have you know satisfied or, or or done you know at in my 20s and it's like now there's no time to do it and say that I did it in my 20s it did not have to be in my 30s and I was just so you know just apprehensive about turning 30 and um you know time waits for no one so apprehension or not Lo and behold, by the grace of God, you know, I made it, I made it to 30. And so now just reflecting on this past year, it's just been an incredible experience. And I just wanted to share with you all 30 things that I have learned since I turned 30. And uh, I hope this anything in this video may help somebody who is transitioning into this new stage in their life or those that are already here with me. You know, we're all navigating this thing together. Um, so I hope this video is helpful to somebody and uh, would love to hear your thoughts in the comments as well. But without further ado, let's get right on into today's video. Um, so starting off with number one, I do have like a full list, y'all, because I want to keep this organized. Um, but uh, there's there's just so many, so many gems here, so many things that I've learned. Um, but one of the biggest things is that it's not too late. Uh, as I said before, I was very apprehensive. Uh, about turning 30 just because I felt like I there were so many things that I should have done should have concentrated on should have accomplished whatever the case may be before this time frame and when I tell y'all entering your 30s it is not too late your life is seriously just beginning I, I truly feel like my life is just beginning since turning 30 I've picked up a new hobby a new sport never even picked up a t I can't even remember ever picking up a tennis racket in my entire life and decided to do it one day as a 30 year old took my soul my first solo international trip at age 30 just so many different things um and the goals that I thought that I should have accomplished by that point I come to learn that it's okay that I haven't accomplished those goals and they can still be accomplished. It's not too late. It doesn't mean that 
because I haven't accomplished the goal by age of 30, that that means that I have to pivot and choose something else just because it didn't happen yet. It's not too late. Like I can continue to strive to accomplish those goals and still live my life in the best way possible. So it's, it's, it's not too late. If you think it's too late, trust me, it's not. The time is going to pass anyway. We don't know when our time is going to be up. So we have to continue to live our life to the fullest. And so just, it's not too late. That's, that's, that's the tweet. That's it. <laughs> um, number two, I would say is, and these are in no particular order of importance. Um, just a FYI on that, but, um, self, self care is essential and it's not selfish. You have to take care of yourself. And there's been so many instances where I have felt guilty about taking care of myself for example, um, I might get a call from someone and know that it's like a check-in call or like just like a, you know, hey, let's talk or whatever kind of call. And sometimes I, you know, I used to feel guilty if I did not answer a call. So I would sometimes answer calls in, if I wasn't in the mood or if I was, you know, just going through some things by myself in need, in needed time, I would still answer that call. I would still take that time. And sometimes you have to, you know, just, you know, be selfish. It's okay. It's okay to be selfish in the right ways. You know, I think that the word selfish has a natural negative connotation to it. But as I've grown older and as I've, you know, pivoted into this new stage of my life, I realize that it's, it's not selfish at all. Like, I'm sorry, self care is not selfish at all. And selfish is not a negative thing. It doesn't always have to be a negative thing. Yes, are some people selfish? And that is negative? Yes. But you don't have to think of it in that way. You don't always have to think of being selfish in a negative light. Sometimes you have to do that, you know, in order to be able to even pour into others, you know, later on. So it's so important. It's so important to, to really take care of yourself overall. And of course, I'm gonna like go into even you know, more about taking care of yourself specifically, but in general, you've got to, you've got to take care of yourself. Um, number three, true friends are rare. Cherish them. Um, I lost two close friendships, not the actual people, but the friendships, um, this year. And, um, when I reflect on like my friendships and things of that nature, as I've grown older, who I can make a whole video about this. And I think I probably will. Um, I think there's so much that I can say that I just cannot fit in this video about navigating, you know, life in my thirties especially navigating friendships. But what I will say is the ones that show up for you, the ones that are there for you, the ones that are consistent, cherish them. Seriously, y'all. Um, my The friends that I do have that I know have my back to the fullest, that I don't have to question their loyalty. I don't have to question, you know, if they have my back. We don't have to talk every day. We don't, some friends I don't even talk to, you know, every single week or sometimes, you know, we, we have a monthly check-in, but I know at the end of the day, they're there, you know, the, they're, they're the genuine ones that are going to be there for me when I need them. And so if you have, if you have those relationships, please y'all cherish them as you get older, because it's natural. It's a part of life that you're going to fall off with people. It doesn't always have to be be something significant. Doesn't mean that someone has necessarily done something bad to you and vice versa. But the older you get, you start realizing every single relationship that you've had is not going to remain in that way. It could mean that you drift off and you completely separate completely as friends. It could mean that your friendship is not in the dynamic that it was before, meaning that maybe somebody's your best friend as a child and then you grow up and you guys still maintain a friendship but you're just not on that closeness that you used to be um but yeah if you have it you know those true friends y'all i oh when i tell y'all i have appreciated my friends 
my true friends more than ever in this season of my life because of the friendships that have been tarnished or that I've drifted apart from. I have so much more of an appreciation for my true friends and, um, you know, just don't take them for granted as you get older. Number four, I would say your body is capable of amazing 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 things that you don't even realize that you're capable of until you put yourself out there um so listen to your body you know um this is kind of a health as well type of thing as well listen to your body you're the only one in your body so no one can tell you how you feel in your body you know if something is wrong, if something's off, listen to that. You know, we, we, the older I get, the more of an appreciation I have for the body that I'm in, you know, to be, to have activity of my limbs, to be able to go work out, to be able to have a really, you know, tough tennis lesson and I'm sweating and I'm sore and I'm, I appreciate that more now, you know, than I did before um, because I realized we're not always, you know, everyone's not as fortunate, you know, to have the activity of their limbs to, you know, to be able to have free movement, all of that. So, you know, we just have to really appreciate that because it's not always going to be like this. That's the reality of it. So as I've gotten older and gotten to this age, you know, I just really um, appreciate the body that I've been given, that I've been blessed with um, and what it's capable of. And I just, you know, I, I get really, um, I'm just really appreciative. We're just really appreciative of the body that I've been given um, and all its imperfections. And so, yeah, it def definitely take care of it. It's not too, number five, going back to um, friendships, relationships with friends, it's not too late to make new friends. I will be honest with you all, when I moved to Florida, I was very much anti making new friends. I was like, I'm coming here for school. You know, I may get some study groups together or whatever the case may be. I did not expect to have or meet people that would become lifelong friends when I moved to Florida. I just wasn't interested in it. I felt like I had all the friends that I needed. And I, I kind of said that to myself multiple times. I was like, I don't need any more friends. I have all the friends that I need at this point in my life. So I'm just here to get my degree and then I'm out. I'm going back home. I'm going here, I'm going there. And and I don't need any more friends. It is okay to make new friends. Everyone in our lives are not meant to be here forever. And when I say here, I, I don't mean in the physical. I mean, you know, the relationship aspect of it. So embrace, you know, new friends, embrace the opportunity to make new friends. Um, you know, it's just, it's just very interesting. Um, the older you get and you start developing relationships and friendships and you start realizing like that you've only lived like potentially half of your life at 30. And so when you think about it, do we really expect to never meet anyone else? in our lives that we can love and cherish and that can, you know, um, help us grow and help us love and help us develop into better individuals. So when you think of it like that, you're like, Oh, of course not. That doesn't make sense. So it hit me, you know, when I kind of hit this age of look, it's okay to meet new friends. Like you're not still friends with everyone that you were friends with when you were a kid and that's okay. So why would you think that you're done completely done making friends just because you know, you've hit that 30 mark. So yes, absolutely. It's not too late to make new friends. Number six, mental health matters. Prioritize it. Oh, y'all, man, that is the one that is the one that is the one. When I tell y'all, we oh, we have to we have to prioritize our mental health like we really do. It's not even a joke at this point. Because when you know what, how like your mental health aligns with your physical health, you realize that you, there is no one without the other. I mean, you truly do. And the older that I get, the more I realize that. Like I, I literally cannot neglect my mental health. It is an integral part of my whole entire well-being. 
if the mental's not together, the physical's not going to be together. The physical's not to be going to be together. The mental's not going to be together. So I've, I've just really learned that I have to really pay attention to prioritizing my mental health, not making it a secondary thing, but making it a priority um, and finding new ways uh, to do that, to take care of myself, you know, starting therapy. That's a goal that I have this year. Um, I actually started going to therapy a while back. I was having a lot of anxiety and stress through grad school. So I took advantage of the free resources that my school offered, which if you are in school, um, just a tidbit on that, there are a lot of schools have free resources on mental health counseling, therapists and things of that nature. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you check out those type of things um, if you're in school so that you don't have to pay for it. Because a lot of time those things are free. Um, but that's a really big goal of mine this year is to get a therapist and like somebody that I see on a regular basis. Like this is my therapist. Um, but yeah, I am definitely taking measures to take care of my mental health in other ways. Um, but that's a big goal of mine this year is to find someone that's the right fit for me. And, um, you know, just to continue to prioritize that mental health because it's so it's so important. Number seven, um, you cannot pour from an empty cup. Fill yours first back. It's, it's very relatable to the um, self care is not selfish uh, one. Um, because that's what I've realized I used to think that if I didn't take care of everybody else, that I was neglecting them. I was being a bad friend. I was being a bad sister. I was being a bad, I was about to say mother. I'm not a mother yet. I was being a bad sister. I was being a bad daughter. I was being a bad whatever, you know, um, that I am to people. And once I started realizing that if I'm not taking care of myself, then I can't take care of the people that I love. So I'm doing them a disservice by not prioritizing myself if I expect, because I can't expect to, to be able to do both, you know, your body is going to tell you when enough is enough and you want to be able, you don't want your body to tell you when enough is enough. You want to catch that, you know, when, early on so that your body doesn't shut down for you and tell you, look, no more. You're doing too much for other people. You're doing too much. Here. You're doing too much there. And now I'm going to shut you down. And that's like the worst thing because you can't plan for it. You know, you can't. You know, sometimes it's it's a financial commitment. I mean, hospital stays are extremely expensive. An emergency room visit is extremely expensive. So you just don't want to be in a situation where your body tells you when it's it's time to slow down and it's time to, sh you know, shut things down. Um, so, yes, please, 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 when I tell you, the older that you get, implement this now. Take care of yourself. Um, you cannot pour from an empty cup. You just cannot. Um, no matter how much you think you can, you really cannot, and it will catch up to you. So I've definitely learned that for sure. Um, number eight, forgiveness is and forgive someone who really hurt me unexpectedly. I mean, I like a very much blindsided type of hurt. Um, someone that I thought was close to me um, and never got an apology. Um and I don't expect to get one, but I've forgiven that person. And I think, you know, yeah, you just get to a point where you realize, I know they always say it and it sounds cliche that forgiveness is for you, not the other person. But the the older I get, the more I realize that it really is for you. Because before I had forgiven this person without an apology, I just felt you know, so much tension within myself every time I would think of this person because they're not completely out of my life for reasons out of my control. Um, so it's just something that I have to deal with. Um, doesn't mean that, you know, I have to, you know, still be friends with this person or anything. But um, yeah, it's just so certain things. Sometimes you can't control certain things. It's just this is where things are at right now in my life. So I'm dealing with it. But I wasn't able to do that until I forgave that person, knowing that I probably will never get an apology from them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, forgiveness is is key, um, especially when it comes to potentially never having a person apologize or acknowledge um, that they've hurt you. Uh, and you have to be able to move on from that without that apology. Um, you have to be able to forgive them on your own, um, you know, potentially without ever hearing them acknowledge it and that takes 
it, it's a it's a lot it's a lot it takes a lot of bravery it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of um inner work to to, to be able to do that prayer 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 you know asking god to um soften your heart praying for that other person it's tough it's tough to pray for another person that has hurt you um but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta sometimes remember that you don't know what's going on in other people's lives uh you don't know what inner things that they're dealing with um and you just might be the target you know for everything else that's going on in their life you just happen to be there at that time and all of the fire that they've been building up from other things goes to you you know so forgive 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 you know um and let go you know don't hold grudges just let it go let it go that's what I would say. Number nine, I've learned to embrace what makes me unique. There are certain, there are so many things about myself that I used to, I don't want to say hate. I, I hate is such a strong word, but there were certain things about myself that I just really did not like. And I tried to change myself. I had people, individuals you know, make me feel self-conscious about certain traits that I have. Um, and then the older that I got, I realized that these are the things that make me me. These are the things that make me unique. These, like, this is lay. This is this is what separates lay from this person and that person and this person over here and that person over there. And so that's what I've learned. I'm like, I'm, I'm 30 now. I'm, you know, I'm a grown now. I'm, I'm evolving. I'm 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 a different person. I'm a different woman than I was before. But yet there are certain things that are still here even when I've evolved and I realize that that is what makes me me. That is what makes me unique. That is what makes me lovable to the ones who love me. Um will be lovable to the, you know, to the the um partner that I will eventually have um that will attract, you know, my my partner, my future partner to me and so I just stopped, yeah, stopped letting people dictate how I should feel about myself um, and those little things that just make me me. I just started to embrace it, y'all, and it's been such a freeing feeling. I absolutely love it. And so I've learned that as well, just embracing what makes me me. Uh, number 10, compare, ooh, child. Mm. Comparison is the thief of joy. Oh, that's the one that is, ooh, that is the one, that is the one, that is the one. Big already said that. But when I tell y'all, I, I probably, again, will probably make a separate video on some of these and elaborate because there's just so much I can say about a lot of these things. But um, I always heard this growing up. Comparison is a thief of joy. Comparison is a thief of joy. But I didn't, I didn't really, it didn't really click for real, for real, until I got to my adult adulthood and started just getting older and then hitting 30 and again feeling like I haven't accomplished what I want to accomplish. I haven't done what I was supposed to do. By this time, I was supposed to do this. I was looking at pre-classmates that I graduated with. We graduated in the same high school class, um, high school graduating class. I had classmates that I finished undergrad with and just looking at what they're doing now. You know, I'm single. I am I have I am not in a relationship. I have no children. I desire to have children. I desire to be married. And so just seeing so many people around me settling down at least at bare minimum in serious relationships. Like so many people around me, mostly everyone around me is in a serious relationship, married or engaged. And it's just like me, I'm just like you know, and, um, but I realized like me comparing my journey to theirs is doing a is doing me a disservice and B it has nothing to do with me. Why would I compare my journey to someone else's journey when I'm me and they are them? You know, when you think of it in that way, you're like, why would I compare my journey to somebody else's? They're literally living a completely different life. So why would I even think to myself that, oh, I should have been doing this because that person was doing that. Or I should be here at this point because that person is here. When they're like, we're not even 
in the we're not in the same body we don't have the same there's everything's different everything's completely different so why why continue to compare myself you know to this individual over here just because we happen to be the same age and we happen to graduate at the same time you know so that is that is such a huge one for me and i am you know getting better at it the older i get the more i grow this year i you know i'm i'm really doing well with it um i still have my times don't get me wrong but i kind of joke joke more so joke about it now um like oh wow this person da, 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 i should have been right you know versus really feeling like it which is how i was you know previously so i'm proud of myself because there's been a lot of progress in that department number 11 take risk take risk take risk take risk y'all um regret is worse than failure i've definitely realized that i'd rather take a risk um and it just doesn't work out and i know that okay that wasn't for me god has something better for me but at least i tried because one thing that i one feeling that i hate is the feeling of something passes me by because i didn't try because i thought i would fail and then i go back and think about it and then i'm like well what if i hate that feeling i hate the feeling of what if and and as i've gotten older i hate it even more or i dislike it even more you know because I don't want to ever be, I don't want to be in positions where I know I could have done something and I just didn't because I was scared of failure. Why not just try it? Why not? What is the worst that can happen? No. Okay, you're not qualified for that job. What is the worst that can happen? They send you a rejection email. I'm sure we've all gotten reject, rejected from a job at one point or another. You know, and if not, great. But we've all had some type of rejection or failure in our life. It's just redirection, you know? So... I would say I've definitely learned, you know, take, take the risk, um, go for it. And the worst that can happen is just, you're in the same spot that you were before you took the risk, you know, um, uh, number 12, your worth is not, my worth is not determined by the, um, by, by my accomplishments. Um, whew, wow. That one, that one has been a stickler for me. Um, just growing up and, putting so much emphasis on schooling you know my parents were you were very um on me about school uh especially my dad my mom was a teacher she still is a teacher but even growing up she was a teacher um so and I'm the oldest out of three so that all of that combined um I just felt I always felt like my worth per se was determined by my grades and my accomplishments in school and so when I started having trouble with certain things in college I really struggled with that I really struggled with not succeeding in things and you know I'm gonna be transparent you know getting a C in a class or even you know having to retake a class like calculus like I'm gonna be transparent with y'all I got a D and one of my, I, I've, I've gotten a D before in college, had to retake the class. I think I retook it and still got a C. And I'm just being transparent with that because when I tell y'all there was a point in time that I would have never even shared that because I was so embarrassed, um, you know, about having that. But I realized like, you know, it's life, life happens. Um, but yeah, I used to put so much of my worth in my grades and my accomplishments. And I realized that there's so much more to me than good grades. There's so much more to me than this award or whatever the case may be. And so I got to a point where I started like really focusing on my, you know, my inner self, my, my self-worth, my self-love, um, and not putting so much emphasis and value on those outward accomplishments to you know, determine am I worthy? Am I not worthy? Am I this or am I that? Uh, number 13, rest is so essential. Rest is so essential to prevent burnout. When I tell y'all I have been burned out so much these past, like I would say six, seven years. Um, and then you get to a point where you like hitting 30 and you, you feel it, you feel it more that, I mean, your body, y'all, when I tell you that, your body will tell you when it's burnt out and when it's burnt to the ground, it seriously, 
seriously will. And so I have learned I need to rest. And I'm still working on that one. I'm working on that one actually probably more than a lot of the others because I just realized like I have to get my rest, but I'm it's a work in progress, but we're working on it. Uh number 14, my voice matters. I matter, my voice matters, my opinions matter. And I need to use it. I need to stop being timid about voicing my opinion. I need to stop caring so much what people think. That's what I, you know, I've learned that a lot. Stop caring so much what people think about you. That one, I just, I really beaten that one into my brain. Like, stop caring what people think about you. Stand up for yourself. Use your voice. I recently had one of my closest friends. I was telling her about a situation I had with someone another person that was close to me and um when I was telling her the situation my friend told me that she was proud of me for standing up for myself and that touched me in so many ways y'all because even as a child there were so many I wouldn't say so many but there were definitely times that even to this day I I remember like it was yesterday of times when I did not feel like I properly stood up for myself or I was so concerned with someone liking me and someone you know wanting to be my friend or whatever that I did not stand up for myself so I would let people you know like walk over me or you know just it's it's hard to explain because I have a really strong personality and so people who know me probably would be like what do you like lay having people walk over her yeah okay but it wasn't always like cut and dry like that there were a lot of times when like I would be so concerned with keeping friendships that I would, you know, put so much emphasis on not really voicing my opinion or um, not really using my voice. Um, and so as I've gotten to this age, I don't care anymore, y'all. When I tell y'all I'm I don't care anymore. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I just mean like I am tired of being a people pleaser. I'm tired of being timid in the times that I don't need to be timid and then being non-timid in the times that it doesn't matter as much. I'm prepared at this point in my life to use my voice and to be strong and to be confident. And if somebody doesn't like it, then okay, you know, that's fine. They can, you know, but yeah, I, I, I've gotten to that point where it, it's, it's really imperative for me to use my voice. Um, number 15 You can't control everything. Let it go. Learn to let it go. Everything is not in my control. I have I have learned that. I have a friend of mine who is very good at that to the point where I'll even say, you know, something will happen. Um, Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. You sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm good. And I and I've asked him before, how do you stay so, you know, calm in these times um you know when anybody would be super stressed out and he always tell me look I can't control it nothing I can do about it so I'm not gonna sit here and you know dwell on something that I that I that is completely out of my control and I really admire that mindset and I try and implement it as well the older I get it because I realize like if you're stressing out over things that you can't control you will be stressed out forever um and and you will die stressed out you know so if you can't control it you can't control it you do what you can you control what you can and then after that you let it go um number 16 embrace oh my gosh y'all i forgot i put this one um embrace your emotions don't suppress them and 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 please y'all like don't take this uh to the point of like saying that you know it's okay to just act out and you know, if you're emotional, just act out and just whatever. No, that's not what I'm saying here at all. But I've always been told that I'm super emotional. And I am, y'all. It took me a while to actually really embrace it. But I am. I'm I'm very emotional. I cry. There'll be some... I cry over tick, people on TikTok, child. I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. I cry when I'm angry. I cry when I'm frustrated. I cry, y'all. I'm a crier. That is me. And I just have to embrace that part of me. I've learned to embrace it uh, as I've gotten older and just realized that I am an emotional person. Um, 
and I'm a crier and it just is what it is. Um, and so I am learning to embrace those emotions, control them in the right environments, control them in the right settings, but don't, you know, make it like it's a negative thing. Um, so I'm learning to embrace my emotions and not trying to suppress them. Sometimes you just got to let it out. It just is what it is. Number 17, I'm stronger than I think and I need to keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one's pretty self-explanatory. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, number 18, invest in experiences, not just material possessions. And I'm very good at that, but I have gotten even better with that as I've gotten to this age. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I uh, took my first solo trip. Uh, well, my first solo international trip. So I've been on multiple solo trips. Um, actually before I turned 30, yeah, at least one minimum one, I think one, two, I'm sure I've been on a couple before I turned 30. Um, if I remember correctly, um, but yeah, like I would, I would say experiences are so valuable. The older that you get, um, experiences with yourself, experiences with others, with significant others, like all of that. Um, so I, I'm a shopper. I love to shop. Um, but I really, what I really invest in is travel and experiences. Like I love a good experience over, uh, you know, a shopping spree. Like I'll take a trip any day over a shopping spree. Um, so just really, that's what I really just kind of honed in on and developed like my love of experiences, my love of travel, um, and just realizing like memories and experiences are to me so much more valuable than the material possessions, you know, that I have in my room right now or that I have in my house right now. Like all of that means is minuscule in comparison to the to the experiences that I that I've actually had. Number 18. Oh no, that was number 18. Number 19, uh your your relationships, my relationships reflect my values, so choose wisely. Um I am dating or trying to date y'all. It's been honestly a miss. Um, but even as I'm dating, I have, um, really reflected on what I want and knowing what I want. And I'm so proud of myself for really having a, a really solid idea of what I want and what I want in my next relationship, because Lord's willing, it will be my last relationship and it will lead to marriage. So I'm very particular about, you know, the relationships that I'm developing with people. And, um, I don't keep people around if I don't see a future so yeah you're uh and and not only relationships romantic but friendships so you know if I start seeing that a certain friendship we no longer align maybe our values don't align or something like that just being at a point where I'm okay with that and can let it go um and it doesn't have to be like a huge deal but it just you know, you just value your relationships and you understand that your relationships are, are an extension of you. Um, so you have to kind of value that and value the people that you have in your life, not just let anybody and everybody in your life. Uh, number 20, personal growth is a lifelong journey and I have to embrace it. And that's a huge one for me because again, it just goes back to that feeling of not accomplishing something by a certain age or I should have done this by this age or I should have done that by this time around. Um, so yeah, just like knowing that this is a lifelong journey of personal growth. Like I'm, this is who I am now, but in five years, I'm probably going to be a slightly different version of myself. I'm definitely completely a different version of myself from who I was five years before now. And so just knowing and embracing that this personal growth journey is not going to just stop at each you know, milestone. Okay. I turned 30. Now my personal growth is done. No, like I'm probably, I'm probably going to have a whole different set of experiences and ideas at 35, at 40, at 50, you know, whatever the case may be. So it's, it's, it's definitely something to just keep in mind for me to keep in mind that it's a journey. And just because I've reached a certain age doesn't mean that journey is going to end. Number 21, you're not too old to try new things. Um, as I mentioned before, one of the things that I've learned recently is tennis and I love 
the fact that I embraced learning a new hobby but a new sport at that because it's been such a great way for me to stay active um so this definitely co this definitely is very much related to I think it was number one it's not too late um so yeah it's not too you're not too old um to try new things to try new hobbies I've seen literally 60 70 year olds you know weightlifting and in the gym and you know you want to be safe like anything else but you're not too old just because you turn 30 like you're not too old there's i there's other things i want to do y'all that i'm a little bit nervous about and thinking like oh can i do that at age 30 but honestly um learning tennis has just given me the confidence to just put myself out there and learn other hobbies and things i've been wanting to try um there's something else that i'm that i'm potentially gonna be working on at some point um but i think i'll talk to tell y'all about that once i do like the first step of it um because that's gonna be very exciting but i'm thinking about that as well number 22 your intuition is powerful trust it um and even going in deeper with that if you are a believer um uh, like myself discernment discernment um my discernment has definitely grown as i've gotten older but i don't think it's just related to getting older but it's also related to developing my relationship with god so you don't have to uh you know grow older for that discernment to grow if that makes sense because it's not necessarily just about being older and wiser but it's also about letting god lead you and um and guide you you know as you as you go through these journeys and so it just happens that it just has happened for me getting older and getting to this age that you know, I, I discern things much better than I did before. And, and I listen to my gut. If I don't feel safe, I don't do it. I don't go. I don't, ex you know, I, I'm very adamant about that. Listening to that gut. It's just been too many situations of people not listening to their gut on things. And unfortunately, bad things happening. So, yeah, using the, my discernment, my intuition, it is is very powerful. And I need to trust that. Number 23, um, taking take care of your physical health is absolutely worth it as I mentioned before the physical and the mental they are completely aligned in terms of one affecting the other um, so you cannot take you cannot expect uh, to be able to take care of yourself mentally if you're not taking care of yourself physically and vice versa and so my physical health is very important um, I've gotten so busy lately that I have sadly admittedly neglected my physical health um, so we're going to get back to that, y'all. I think I'm going to take y'all along my journey of getting back into a, a regular fitness routine. Um, so you guys can follow along with that and kind of help me stay accountable and hopefully motivate me and I can motivate y'all maybe. I don't know, but physical health is so important and it's definitely, um, it's extremely valuable. Number 24, you're not alone. Seek help when needed. Um, I am so, I spend so much time alone, y'all, that I... I really had to learn to to not get too comfortable with that and to realize that we do need other people. You can be comfortable alone, but still realize that you you don't need to be alone all the time. And um, it's okay to be comfortable with being alone um, because I think a lot of people actually need to be more comfortable being alone. But don't sit in that solitude um, because things are going to happen. You are going to have situations where you need to lean on people. And it's not good to just stick by yourself and, you know, not have anybody else around or embrace the company of others. Um, so I've definitely had to learn that because I realized, like, girl, you you get a little too comfortable by yourself. You know, um, you have people and you don't have to deal with all of these things by yourself. Um, so that's real. that's been really important for me to realize as well. And to seek help. I have one of my friends I have not seen, I want to say since we graduated from college, but we, we've kept in touch throughout these years, love her to death, love, love, love her. Um, and she, I recently saw her at a mutual friend's wedding that she was in and I was a guest at, and, uh, I remember her telling me like, you know, lay, she was in, in so many words, basically just told me like, I know, you know, we're um, far, like distance wise, far away, but, you know, I'm still here for you. There's like the love has never been lost throughout all these years. And she told me, you know, just to always remember that I don't have to go through things alone and don't suffer alone. And that was so profound to me. That was such 
you know, a special moment for me, not only for her to just say that, but just a reminder to myself, stop trying to deal with everything on your own way. Like you have people here for a reason. God has put people in your life for a reason. And so don't think that just because you are okay with and comfortable being alone, that you're supposed to always be alone. And there's a difference, you know, there's a difference between contentment and enjoyment and being alone and then thinking that you don't need nobody else because we all need somebody else. So that's been re really important for me to just remember. And so I have tried to you know, reach out to my friends more, reach out to people for, you know, for guidance more and not sit in that that loneliness or that aloneness. Um, number 25, my story, your story is unique. Uh, don't compare it to others. Again, it comes goes back to that comparison. It's a thief, thief of joy. Um, but in this case, you know, what I'm saying is that my story is my story. Um, I did hint on this earlier, but my story is my story. Nobody else is living Lay's life, right? Um, and so just sitting in that, knowing that this is me. I have, you know, God has put me here for a reason. God has a specific path for me. God has a specific journey for me. My story is unique. I need to embrace that, that journey. You know, I don't need to compare that journey to somebody else. This is my story. It's being written. It's not ending. You know, this is these are ongoing chapters. At some point it will end, but it's not ending right now. And that story is unique. Um, and that's something I need to embrace uh, as I as I get older and I've I have started embracing it more. Is that like this journey is mine. I can is mine. I can do it how I see fit. I can navigate it how I see fit with the guidance of God and um yeah and it's me it's mine you know it belongs to me and that's really special number 26 you're doing better than you think be kind to yourself i have really 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 embraced that idea of being um happy with the progress that i've had or done even if it's not where i thought i would be you know um and just um being proud of myself in the stage that I am in now because I am doing better than I think you know I am like when I think about certain things I'm like girl you've done this you've done this you've done this you know you need to stop heart heart um harping on yourself what's the word harping on yourself you need to just not being so hard on yourself there's an easy one I just need to stop being so hard on myself um because I'm doing better than I think you know and uh, I need to be kind to myself as well that's that's a big one i do need to be kind to myself so i've also learned to well number 27 i've also learned to embrace my vulnerability and it's a sh because it is a strength um, i am very vulnerable i'm very like i mentioned to you all before i'm very emotional i have a lot of emotions i love that about me um but again it took a while to get to the point of loving that about myself i used to think of it as a weakness um, man, when I tell y'all, I really used to think of my emotions as a weakness and it really affected me. It actually at one point was affecting my self-esteem. It was affecting how I thought about myself and I was trying to, ch I would, I was actually in the midst of trying to change myself. And then after a certain point when I realized, girl, this part of you is not going away. This is just, this is part of you. You need to embrace it. Yes. Do you need to maybe figure out a better way to navigate it? Absolutely. There's room for improvement. But to just try to not be emotional, I mean, I was just like, this is not true. I did not feel like myself. It was so forced, you know, to not try and be emotional. And so, um, yeah, I need to embrace being vulnerable. I need to embrace that side of myself um, because it is a strength. You know, it's not it's not a complete weakness. Um, number 28, I am capable of change. And I should not be afraid to pivot. And that one has been so important to me as well because there have been certain things where I have had to um, navigate uh, maybe not something not happening or not happening in the way that I wanted it to where I had to say okay do I need to change my approach to this do I need to still be doing this at all um, and so those are conversations that I have with God like hey Lord if this is something that you want me to do if you still want me in this I need you to tell I need you to tell me because right now it doesn't look like it so that's what you want. And one thing I love about God, who I'm so grateful. 
is that he does show me he does show me and it'd be that like bright red sign you know like it's like god show me a sign and it's a big old big old sign that's how god has spoken to me in some of, in some of the ways that i've asked him to to confirm that okay this is what you want me to do or you want me to change or you want me to pivot or you don't want me to think of it like this in this way anymore you want me to do x y and z and there's still a lot of things that i'm figuring out but again I just turned 30 y'all so we have a lot of life to figure out so i'm not expecting uh, overnight uh, i'm not expecting an overnight change in a lot of the mentality of these ways but um yeah in general though i am embracing um just the differences in in the journey that i might take or the way i take it or just the journey altogether and not being afraid of pivoting or changing um even though it can be very scary Number 29, my values and priorities may shift and that is okay. Very much similar to the change aspect, being capable of change, embracing change, but understanding that I am getting older, my values, my priorities, they're going to change as my friends and my, 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 yeah, as my friends get older their priorities are going to change. And this has been, you know, super, this has been a, a big thing for me being the single friend, not saying that none of my friends are single, but honestly, the majority of my close friends are either in a relationship, engaged or married or close to it, you know? And so, um, some of them have kids, some of them have multiple kids. And so I am at a point now where I have more in common with less of my friends than I did before. Um, meaning like more of my closest friends have less in, less in common when it comes to those things. The priorities and stuff that we have are different. So like a lot of my friends, their priority is their relationship, their marriage, their kids. I have, not, I have none of that. So my priorities are going to be completely different. And I have to be okay with that and not look at it as a disadvantage not look at it as i'm less than just look at it as my priorities are different my values are different and they will change as i change but where they are now is okay and it's okay when they do change because you're not going to stay in the same place that you are in right now and so i'm i have been very supportive in my mindset of that and I really like how that has um, kind of transformed my thinking about where my values lie, where my priorities lie. And then also understanding my values as well as I get older and get into the dating scene because that has helped me just to kind of know what, I, what I'm not dealing with. That's huge for me. Like I have things that I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. I will deal with that. I will deal with this, but I will, there's certain things. This is a value for me. This is a priority for me. So I'm not going to deal with this. And that saves me a lot of time too. When it comes to dating people because i've gotten to a point where i i'm comfortable with where my values and priorities are right now so i know what i want and i think that's important as you get older to know what you want and to have more of an idea of that but if again if it shifts it's not the end of the world and that is okay and then finally number 30 i don't even know how long this video is y'all i don't have i don't see the timer or nothing so i don't know um but the whole thing is getting posted so if anybody made it to the end i love y'all for real for real um but the point of this video before i go into the last one the point of this video is not necessarily that everybody is going to watch this whole thing but even if someone scrolls through it and see something that resonates with them um then this video has all of the purpose that it needed to have um and if not it's just a good way for me to reflect and i would love to rewatch this video a year from now and just see what has changed, what I could add to this list, um, and how I've just continued to support myself and support my journey in my 30s. Last but not least, um, I'm still learning, and that's the beauty of life. I I I really embrace um, the concept of lifelong learning, being a lifelong learner, just loving learning in general. I have a bachelor's degree, I have a master's degree, I'm planning on getting a doctorate degree, and I may stop there. We'll see. But I am a lifelong learner. I love learning, y'all, uh, to the point where 
I kind of feel a weirdness about not being in school. Uh, the fact that I have been in school for about six years now, uh, it's, it's, it's weird to me. But at some point in life, you realize, okay, you can still learn. You don't have to be in school to learn. Like, you can still learn outside of school. And so I really embrace that. I really embrace, you know, the journey of, of this thing that we call life. Like, we're all here. We're, none of us have been here before. Isn't that interesting? Like, when you think about it, no one has been here before. So, like, when we think about, like, even our parents and maybe things that we feel like they could have done differently in our childhood, you know, we kind of have to give them a little bit of grace as well because they're here, you know, this is their first time on the earth, just like it's been our first time on the earth or even friends or other relationships and things like that. This is not saying, you know, let people run over you and just do whatever, but it's just a friendly reminder to just give people a little bit of grace um, if they deserve it. Everybody don't deserve your grace, so, you know, but if they deserve it, just give people a little bit of grace because um, we're all still learning, we're all still growing, and I'm so grateful to just still be here, you know, learning and growing, and I cannot wait to see how I continue to just embrace where I'm at in this life, where I'm at in this journey. You know, this first year of my 30s has been profound. It's been life-changing. It's been eye-opening. It's been transformation. It's been so many things, transformative, so many things to me. And I, I, I just, I embrace it so much, y'all. So, um, that's how we're, that's how we're going to evolve with this channel. Um, we're just going to really embrace, um, this beautiful thing called life and, um, this beautiful stage in my thirties. And so again, for those who made it to the end, so much love to you, so much love to you. Um, because I have no idea how, how long this video is. Um, it could be an hour. I'm going to assume it's over an hour. So, um, yeah, I appreciate y'all for being here. Um, uh, we're really going to build this community this year. I'm feeling it y'all. I really am. Um, and so I appreciate each and every one of you all that are subscribed to my channel and even those who watch and aren't subscribed just yet. Cause I know you're coming too. Uh, so yes, of course, if you all enjoyed this video, if it was valuable to you in any way, please be sure to like the like the video comment down below i would love to hear anything that you all want to add to this conversation uh what you've learned in this stage of your life i don't care if you're in your 30s or not but any tidbits any value that you feel like would be added to our audience um i think it would be a, a, a an amazing discussion to um have in the comment section and of course uh if you if you are not already click that subscribe button y'all we have fun over here we really have fun and like I said, this channel is going to grow this year. I'm feeling it. I am feeling it, y'all. So thank you so much for joining me once again. And as always, I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.